I'll probably have time to install the facade panel before it gets too cold. But before that, gutters must be installed, so that water does not splash onto the newly painted panel. I will bend my own gutter hooks with a special tool, so that I get a good drop from the center of the roof, to the left and right pipe. The roof is about 12 meters long, so if I let the drop be about 3 centimeters or just over an inch, at a distance of 6 meters or 19 feet, it will be enough. The next step is to find the right angle on the hook, as all roofs are different. By using an old gutter, I can see the slope better. A gutter should slope forward, away from the house. The reason for that is that if there is a blockage, the water will flow away from the house. I have calculated that I need 21 hooks. I measure from the center, out towards both edges, with a rise of about an inch. Attaching gutters has more steps involved than you might think. You have to do it the right way to avoid moisture damage from rain or condensation. I don't know how you do it in the rest of the world. But this is how we usually do it. There are different ways to attach the hooks, and I do it directly on the roof, because I don't have time to put roof tiles before winter comes. If you attach the hooks directly to the roof, they must be milled down so that they lie flush with the roof. You will see the reason for that a little further on. I fasten the hooks quite tight to handle snow loads, and about cc or oc 60 centimeters, which is about 23 inches. On the hooks, we put another layer of roofing felt, with the adhesive side up. And between the two layers of roofing felt, we put a special plate that we call a foot plate. The reason we have roofing felt under the plate, is condensation. If sheet metal or stone lies directly against wood, condensation can occur, so you should always have a capillary breaking layer in between. The footplate, strengthens the edge of the roofing felt and prevents water from splashing onto the wood under the felt. The plate should preferably hang down in the gutter. When I'm satisfied with the placement, I remove the protection for the adhesive, and glue the sheet onto the roofing felt. The glue provides extra protection against water. I have glue on both the top and bottom of the roofing felt.
The plate is a bit too thick to nail, so I use a nail gun instead. Between the trusses I put a stop for the insulation. The stop also works as a slot into the underside of the roof. Under the roof we put an air gap. But we will do that later. I have booked an electrician who can come as early as next week. But I have to prepare for him. Even though I know how to install electronics, I can't without a license. So I have to hire an electrician. I only cover one side of the wall so the electrician can attach the sockets, and everything else that goes with it. Later I cover the inner ceiling and prepare for all the cables.
Let me show you how carpenters cut drywall. There are different ways, but this way is faster. You can use a straight object to cut the drywall to size, but it's slow, and you need an extra tool. Instead, we press the knife against the folding rule, and measure the correct dimensions and cut directly, like this. It takes a while to learn, but once you get the hang of it, you will use this method, both when drawing and cutting. After you cut the drywall, you may need to create a groove for putty. On the original edge of the plasterboard, it is not needed as the plasterboard already has a groove. But if two cut sides meet, we have to cut a groove for the painter. This may look simple, but it is hard to learn. You have to have the right angle, the right pressure on the thumb and the right speed. You can also trim the edges before that, it makes it easier. So, now that the inspection is done, the fun can begin. Let's bring in the electrician, and insulate the whole house so that we get heat. After that, we'll start with the facade, maybe the kitchens, stairs or bathroom. We'll see. Join me on my journey, that starts now. 